What's going on there YouTube? This is Neko Steel and it's time for our brief team builder for week 6 of season 7 of the GBA. Now if you don't want to watch this of course you can skip right to the battle and I'll put an annotation or something in the description for that. But our week 6 matchup is up against MV and the San Diego Chim Chargers. So if you need a quick rundown of his team I have that on the screen for you. Let's take a look at what we're bringing. Up first, I just want to say that his team is a beast to prepare for. He could literally bring almost any combination of his 11 Pokemon against my team and do very well. It is because of that that our team is kind of forced into a position of prepare for as many threats as you can and then see what he actually brings. Because, um, I think it's a very dangerous game to play against Envy saying, well, he probably won't bring this when he has shown time and time before that he will bring whatever he thinks will get the job done. And that will not be what you expect it to be. So to that regard, we have a few unorthodox EV spreads and we also have a few very straightforward EV spreads. The first uh, straightforward one is a Powdon, which is just fast enough to speed creep um, an uninvested muck or a muck with one point in it in speed. And then the rest is in the, uh, I have enough special, uh, wow, I do not want special attack EVs. That should be special defense. I could have sworn I did that properly earlier, but I want special defense EV so that if the sandstorm is up, I can take scalds from Pelipper. And then the rest is just put into defense because I needed it in there. Now you see here that we don't have a way to hit the Magnezone on this Apaldon. And that's because we have team support. Um, not the Magnezone, the Dragonite. We don't really have a good way to hit the Dragonite. Uh, I can Toxic it, which is nice, um, but uh, nothing on his team really likes being toxic, except for, I guess, Magnezone doesn't mind because it doesn't get toxic. I don't know, there's no point in saying that. What I am saying though, the things that I can't Earthquake don't like being toxic, and then the converse of that is true as well. So, um, if I can Speed Creep the Muck, force it to activate its berry really early, that would be great. Uh, otherwise, throwing Toxics around, except for on the Alakazam, that also is great. A lot of his Pokemon get super effective coverage here, and that's not even counting Dragonite. The reason I didn't go with the Max Fizz, Fizz Death spread against the Dragonite is because it gets so many special options it could use for its Z move as well, Dragonite being his Z captain. There's just a lot of different coverage moves there, and so this, I figured, is the best way to try to take as many of those options as possible. Now, the next Pokemon, Breloom, is here because Breloom and Cloyster, I'm gonna do them together because we can count on his team the number of Pokemon that really don't like to take a Mach Punch. And then on the Pokemon that don't mind taking a Mach Punch, they really don't like taking Ice type moves. So that's gonna be our way of breaking down his, uh, or at least checking a lot of his offensive core potential. This right here will work irrespective of any Scarfers he might bring, any speed creeping he might do, this will at least threaten a number of his Pokemon. Uh, the reason I went with Mach Punch, Bullet Seed, Rock Tomb, and Spore on Breloom is because there is a high probability of him switching in Landorus or Pelipper or um, to a lesser extent trying to switch in something like um, Verazion on my Breloom. And so by running very coverage and running something for speed control, I can stop him from just soaking up a hit very easily. Uh, if he doesn't have the Verizon, I can just use Spore. Granted, he might put um, the safety goggles on something like Landorus or on something like his Alakazam even, just so he has something to switch it in and immediately threaten. So um, I kind of will have to take a look at his team structure at the time. With Cloyster, we're running a Choice Scarf with Ice Shard, Icicle Spear, Razor Shell, and Rock Blast. Why run a Choice Scarf if you're running Ice Shard? That's because most of the time I really want to click Icicle Shard. I just don't want to be in a position where I click Icicle Shard and then I'm immediately threatened out by whatever comes in to take it. Um, granted, by bringing a Choice Scarf, I might still be in that position, but with a Choice Scarf, I can maybe lock into a Rock Blast, excuse me, got a little bit choked up there, run a Rock Blast or something like Pelipper. Um, my other alternative was running Rapid Spin, but in a in this type of matchup, I don't think I'm going to have very many opportunities to rapid spin, nor do I think I want to take um, the time to rapid spin. So uh, I'd rather just do as much, put as much offensive pressure on as I can, and going jolly max speed, 
does allow me to catch a lot of his Pokemon. And if he runs a Scarf uh, Landorus or a Scarf, um, I don't know why it runs Scarf Alakazam, Scarf Rising maybe, I have the, the, the capability to take hits from those Pokemon since those are more physically offensive Pokemon and hit them back. So I really like that too, instead of going with the defense lowering or special defense lowering nature. Now, the next Pokemon we have is Klefki. This is another catch-all Pokemon here, which is kind of self-explanatory by the set. I did do... What is with my EVs getting messed up? This is annoying. Um, okay. I don't understand why it keeps on putting in special attack EVs. I'm definitely not doing that. Let's put that back where I want it. Okay, good. There we go. Alrighty, the reason we have Klefki on this team is to be a nice catch-all to a number of his threats. Um... By running light screen, the team members of his that like to run special type moves such as Empoleon or the Dragonite, Alakazam, I can definitely handle that pressure a lot better with light screen up. With spikes, so much of his team is grounded, I can put on a lot of pressure there. And Magnet Rise allows me to have a way to play around Landorus or coverage on the Dragonite. Uh, light screen also helps with coverage on Dragonite in, in so far as a flamethrower or fire blast or fire punch. And actually, Alolan Muck can run some of those same options. Uh, why do I have the Shed Shell? That's just there for the Magnezone. Um, granted, he might not be interesting in trapping my Magnezone. He might just run Analytic. But um, I don't want to be forced into a situation where I can't switch out, so now I'm just going to put up some, some screens. And Klefki's typing is really important here since he has a Muck and a Dragonite. Um, those are two immunities there that I can at least discourage him from going for just by Klefki's presence alone. So um, a couple of layers of spikes will go a really long way in this game, especially against things as bulky as Muck. Uh, and that can also allow things like the Kingdra or the Kabutops, if he brings those under rain, after a hit or two of spikes or stealth rock, then I can take them out a lot more comfortably with priority. Um, up next we have our Lantern Assault Vest coming once again this week and that's just because we need a switch into Magnezone. We need a switch into Alakazam that doesn't have Energy Ball or Meloetta and this specific spread is actually really nice for taking even Draco Meteors from the likes of Kingdra. Now I do have just enough speed here to outspeed the Muck once again because I'm pretty sure the Muck is coming uh, just because it has such a nice matchup and we have a Reuniclus that we could have brought so why would he not bring Muck? Um, also Funny story, there was definitely a point during my team building where um, I was very, I was like, man, I can see why people bring Trick Room against Envy. It just looks very, very tempting, but I will not be the third one on the chopping block for bringing Trick Room against Envy and getting blown back. We're going to go in a different direction, and this direction is going to work. Now, speaking of priority, our, really? Speaking of priority, our last Pokemon is Swallow. With the Guts Flame Orb, um, if he doesn't have up his um, Rain Dance, just going max attack, max speed, I outspeed everything that he could bring. Uh, granted, that doesn't account for his Dragonite having extreme speed or any possible Scarfers, but with those out of the way, Swallow can have a little bit of a field day here. Um, and of course, Quick Attack, uh, Quick Attack, for example, a Quick Attack and uh, Mach Punch from Breloom is enough to take out Kingdra. Um, and I still have the ability to keep up the Volt Turning between U-Turn and Volt Switch coming from Lantern. So I can go between those two options. Uh, this team builder is a lot longer than I normally have, but um, I just wanted to kind of go through this a little more in depth to show why I had such weird EVs here. Uh, it is going to be an interesting matchup and I hope you guys stuck around for the whole team but if you did thank you for watching but we're going to get right into the battle in just a few moments so we'll see you in a minute alrighty guys so thank you so much for taking a moment to watch my team builder if you did if you didn't that's fine too a quick team rundown for me is going to be of course gut swallow scarf cloister life orb breloom assault vest lantern Defensive Hippaldon, and then a nice greener uh, Klefki. Um, Envy did not bring whom I thought he would bring to this matchup. And um, that's that's a bit of an issue just because of he could have brought anything, so I tried to at least narrow it down to what I thought he'd bring. But it is nice to not see the Landorus T or even Rain in the form of Pelipper. I did decide to go ahead and lead with Hippaldon because if he led with anything but Kingdra, I could get up my rocks on it. 
And if you let with Kingdra, I could just swap out into something else. So uh, that was kind of the game plan there. I, uh, if you guys like this little layout here, this battle was actually rendered by Skyrender, so thank you Skyrender for the little layout at the bottom. Very neat, I like having the Pokemon down there as a little reminder as to what's going on in the match. So for this battle, um, again the game plan was just to get up entry hazards to kind of chip away at things, and then clean up with Swallow and Scarf Cloister, uh, just priority. Priority as much as I could. Uh, he starts off with Kingdra, which I was like, oh. Alrighty then, I didn't think he would start with Kingdra, so we have to make some adjustments. Fortunately though, I do get up the sand stream here, which is going to chip away at Kingdra's health. I was actually curious if he would try setting up the rain. I thought about that right when I swapped out, I was like, maybe I should have roared. But he actually goes for focus energy. I know I can take any one critical hit move, even if he has like critical hit hydro pump. So, um... We're just going to go straight for the play rough, because I can 2-hit KO his Kingdra if he tries to set up more or set up a sub or anything weird. Unfortunately, he burns me, which doesn't end up mattering too much. It does kind of force me to play differently, because I don't get nearly as much damage as I would otherwise on it. So that burn damage kind of uh, dampened the party a little bit. But uh, with that prior damage on Kingdra, that does allow me to be able to revenge kill it with um, two out of three priority options that I have remaining, which is nice. Uh, I didn't want to risk swapping out into Lantern on a Scald, so I just set up layer of Spikes because after Spikes are up, it becomes a lot easier for me to clean up with my priority users this game. Now you're going to see me playing around with Sand Terms a lot this battle because I want the use of chipping away at his Pokemon, but I also don't want my Pokemon whittled down too much by Sand. Um, so here, I figured he would swap out, but I couldn't really play around with that. Uh, so I just went straight for Brave Bird. And Polion comes in and I decide, oh, this will be a good opportunity to see if it's specially defensive or physically defensive. And I get a crit. So that is a little bit of a crit for crit scenario. Uh, interestingly, with that crit, he actually was in range for a facade guts boosted move here. But I didn't want to risk him going for Ice Beam. Uh, and so I just directly go for the U-turn. That also saves me an extra turn of burn damage and sandstorm damage, which will come into play later. Now I do go out into Lantern. I figured he had the um, Wakan Berry because I have a Lantern and a Zapdos, but I want to pop that as early as possible so that he won't have access to that option later on. Furthermore, he can't really damage my Lantern. He could phase me out, he could toxic me, but both of those options are things that I am very much okay with to get extra damage on Empoleon. So he is gonna roar me out and I go out into my Breloom, which is perfect, because now I can just hit him with a Bullet Seed. He doesn't really have a good swap into Bullet Seed followed up by a Mach Punch anyways. Unfortunately, this does reveal to him that I am Life Orb, which is some information that I would have liked because a, a Sashed or even a Scarf Breloom was very viable in this matchup. So, um, I don't like giving away information when I don't have to, but the 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 idea of getting rid of Empoleon on that early was just too nice. Now here I go ahead and mock punch Alakazam because I was very sure that it was um, Focus Sash. He could have had Scarf, I guess, or something weird, Specs, or set up with Encore, but all that doesn't matter because after a fo uh, after a mock a mock punch, excuse me, a Mockus punch. Is that a focus punch? That's a mock speed. After a focus punch, he would probably die. So after a mock punch, he's in range of the quick attack from my Swallow, and it also covers the option of him possibly being Scarf. If he was, I don't know why he would bring Scarf Zam against my team. But if he is, I covered that option as well. So he goes out into his Dragonite here. I was very tempted to stay in and click a move, fearing him to set up with Dragon Dance. But I, I figured just go on to Paladon and I can soak any hit and I can get up the Sandstorm which will break his multi-scale. And lo and behold, he clicks Dragon Dance. Um, I also wanted to save Swallow there just because Swallow is definitely a win condition against his team. I outspeed the Kingdra, I outspeed everything now. Um, that we know that Kingdra is not trying to do Swiss Swim shenanigans. Uh, and I actually, you guys saw the spread that I had on my Paladon. I cannot live a uh, plus one Devastating Drake if it's based off of Outrage. If it had been the uh, Draco Meteor, 
Maybe, because I'm a little bit more specially inclined this week. But that is, I think that's MV's first Z move this season. And what a way to start, because Hippowdon got erased. So in comes Lantern, and it's like, all right, Lantern, it's time to see what his other moves are. So hopefully that was based off of Draco Meteor. No, it was based off of Outrage. Dang, so that means Lantern's gonna go down too. I could have gone out into Cloyster right there and gone directly for Ishar, but I was afraid of him being bulky enough to live the Ishar. Now I was trying to get as much as many sand turns on him as possible before going for Ishar. Because remember, I'm Jolly, uh, and so after the Dragon Dance, he's probably faster than me if he's, you know, max speed like I would expect him to be. Um, Ishar once again fails to kill. That move has not been working out for me. And we find ourselves in a similar situation as last week where it's Ishar, then get hit with an Outrage. But this time this Outrage is boosted by plus one, so it's definitely going to be enough to take out my Cloister. Fortunately though, he gets locked into a three turn Outrage, so I don't have to worry about extreme speed. As our last Pokemon is Swell, and we are actually primed for victory here because by wasting the Sand turns, the Sand ends now. And you can see from the burn damage, I actually only lose eight HP. So that is enough for three more attacks, and that's all I need, because the muck is gonna come in, it's gonna take spike damage, and the then it's gonna be in range 100% for a facade. Uh, he can't use Shadow Sneak on me, because I'm a normal type, so once this muck goes down, that would've been good game, uh, because his two remaining Pokemon were the Kingdra and Verizion, and neither of them would've been able to take a move, and so I would've been able to KO the Verizion right before I ran out of HP from my burn. But unfortunately, it does not end that way because he was um, insightful enough to EV his muck to live a facade after one layer of spike. So fantastic game, MV. You definitely got me there with the prep in the end. I thought I had that game in the bag just by how I took the time to get up my spikes. I took the time to make sure the Alakazam sash was removed. Um, the Dragonite couldn't extreme speed me. I definitely thought I had that game in the bag, but Muck just barely lived that move, uh, leading to my first loss in the GBA, a 0 and 3 loss to Envy and the Chim Chargers. So thank you guys so much for watching the match. If you have any feedback for me on this battle, as far as where you think I should have made different plays, definitely leave it below. I'm looking forward to seeing what you have to say um, for week seven of the GBA. We're going to be going up against the Milwaukee Saws Bucks who are coached by Battler X or uh, Magnitude. So look forward to that because I know that I am. And in the meantime, I hope you guys have a fantastic week. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Oh yes, before I forget, um, Pokemon of the game or player of the game MVP for the Utah Jasmine. That is definitely going to be Swallow this game. Uh, it was able to pressure a good bit just because Envy didn't bring Scarfers or anything like Landorus in order to soak up those hits. And uh, if Muck had gone down, that definitely would have been a good game unless he had um, Focus Band on one of his Pokemon in the back there or something like that. Uh, but um, yeah, Swallow Speed tier just really made this game possible to be won in the first place. And um, right behind Swallow, I think that Hippowdon was really, really instrumental because of the sand stream kind of chipping away at things. I did need a little bit more damage on the uh, Dragonite because if Dragonite had gone down the Cloister, then I would have had Cloister up against his remaining Pokemon as well. So, um, but yeah, if you guys enjoy the aspect of Cooper doing the uh, Pokemon of the game, I'm going to try doing a few of those too because it's a nice little touch as well. And I enjoyed it when he did it. So why not try my hand at it too? All right, guys. Thank you so much.